Gen 3 was my first main Pokemon experience, specifically Ruby version. Recently, I actually found my old Ruby version from when I was a kid. For some reason, there's no like labeling on it. Still works, of course. That's what this video is about. But it gave me the chance to play through Ruby again. And this time, I had been doing some RNG manipulation for shinies and stuff like that in the game. So as I was doing this run and going through, I really was taking in all the experiences that Pokemon Ruby had to offer that I had maybe forgotten about over the years or just didn't quite appreciate until I was able to kind of have it in my hands and play it. There's so many unique places in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. The Hoenn region is incredible. Even if it has a ton of water, like that's fine <laughs> because you know, there's, there's still so much within it. Hoenn has so many things to offer. It's not just water, <laughs> contrary to popular belief, but it does have a lot. So as I was doing this playthrough, I wrote down some of the details that I really enjoyed and picked up on, and I'll share them. Like I previously mentioned, I have been RNG manipulating shiny Pokemon, having fun with that, and using a sweet scent Pokemon to get the shinies to appear, like force an encounter, um, so that once the timer kind of clicks, you know when to press A on sweet scent. I've been using sweet scent so much, but one detail that I had missed was that you can't do it like in a doorway. Um, even if, like, for example, a cave, and I had been so confused with this because I had stepped into Rust the tunnel. I stepped into the tunnel and I wanted to sweet scent, but it would not let me sweet scent until I remembered that I have to take one more step up because for some reason you can't sweet scent in the entrance area. And that's cool on some whatever, but you know where you can sweet scent that surprised me? You can do it in the Pokemon Center. You can do it in other buildings. Of course, you're not gonna get any encounters here in the Pokemon Center, but you can still sweet scent for it and at least try. One of the shinies I was most looking forward to getting was actually Spinda, because Spinda is such a unique Pokemon in the fact that there's so many combinations of patterns and things. Like this hidden detail, not hidden, but this detail of them adding in this Pokemon with this mechanic that it's not just going to have one pattern. Like, it's got the one pattern on official everything. But can you even find that in the game? I mean, like, I think theoretically, yeah, right? But ah, it's so weird and cool that they did it. I'm so happy Spenda exists. But it seems like such a weird thing you would concoct. But no, I absolutely love it. I like the shiny I had got in. He looked like a kind of panda with the big green on his muzzle. The shiny Pokemon in this game, experiencing them once again in this tiny handheld um, way has been also just kind of incredible viewing them and stuff. The colors and everything, it's very vibrant and different than the 3D models that got kind of desaturated in the later gens. But that's another one, is just the Spinda mechanic that exists. I absolutely am a fan of that. I also love the little detail of when, not only when the evil team is at the museum blocking entry at Slateport before you do your main quest of delivering goods. Once you clear them, you have to go into the museum, of course, and the museum charges like 50 poka whatever to get in as an entrance fee. And it's a detail from life, of course, because I just think it's charming they put that in that like, you know, it's obviously a museum. You obviously need to like pay your entrance fee to get in. Uh, they did not have to do this, but they did. They also did it, and I guess I assume if you don't have $50 or what have you, like, you're just kind of screwed. I guess you gotta just find a way to get some. So, I like, this is one of those details that, that would probably not be seen in a modern Pokemon game at all, because, you know, I don't know, it, it's... I could never see them being like, hey, you don't have 50? Tough luck. 
even though it's very unlikely. But that is just a fun detail that I like. Another one is seeing NPCs on the cable car route up the mountain while you're riding it. So apparently, there you can actually find people hiking up the mountain when you're riding the cable car, um, which is incredible. It's very rare, maybe not very, I'll just say it's rare. I think it's about 1 in 64. Yeah, that's really cool. Next is the uh, hot springs in that one town. I think this is also also very iconic, but um, the fact that you can go into this one certain special Pokemon Center and there's a bathhouse or bath, you know, behind it, um, that's awesome. You have this Pokemon Center that was designed, this town that was designed as well, and they could have easily not programmed you be, to be able to enter the bath or anything like that. They, it would have been simple to do that. But they didn't. They wanted you to interact with it, get in there, have fun, I guess, and create, well, let's see this little detail that's super memorable and cozy, I guess, <laughs> you know? So this one particular Pokemon Center has this special doorway to the bath and whatnot. And then you go over, you get to take the little steps, and then you get to go inside. And even though this is all pixels, it's still really fun to see the sprite kind of head neck deep in the water, like it's supposed to be. Um, it really makes pixels really cool. Um, and the fact that like you can actually make these scenes that are, you know, not necessarily super complex with tons of stuff, but like you're conveying ideas and I think it conveys a great like feeling or idea and that's why people like it so much. At least that's why I like it. I also really like the details of different grass types, different weather. Specifically when I say grass, I'm thinking about the big tall grass parts because we never really got that again. I know in black and white, black two and white two, we had gotten like longer bushes or something that would have double encounters, I believe. And so that was some variant on the grass. But uh, no, I, I appreciate Pokemon Ruby's uh, tall grass here. Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. They had tall grass that kind of shakes a little bit, makes a nice noise when you go through it, and your character gets pretty hidden. And it was always fun going through this stuff, especially with like a Repel, because there's a lot of encounters. But going through here and then also trying to dodge trainers and whatnot very fun i really enjoy it and it's super iconic for the games i also love that uh like i said the weather conditions sometimes it's raining and the rain looks really nice but there's also like puddles every like in certain spots which makes sense just the fact that there's puddles at all is really nice. Like, we just got out of Scarlet and Violet, pretty bare bones. But like, once again, it's just a detail that didn't have to be put in, but they did. When you go to the puddle, you're able to see your reflection. You're also able to see your reflection kind of move around like a little bit as if it's water because it is water. <laughs> They are moving around, and that's so cute. When you step in the puddles, it also, of course, has that puddle movement and whatnot, and it has a nice sound. It really adds to the immersion of the environment, to that scene and everything that I really like. And the same goes for when you're surfing, let's say, you know, you're able to see these little puddles and things behind you in some of the lakes or areas and you're able to see that. I love seeing that. I love the part outside of Fort Tree where you're able to go and find lots of puddles and cute little areas and bridges to go through, and then you can see the clouds reflected down there. You can see all of that. They didn't just slap on blue and keep it like that. They added, you know, these awesome moving reflections and whatnot, and as I said, just fleshing out the environment. It's wonderful. I also had only just now realized another little detail that I never noticed until it was pointed out to me really re recently was that the routes and the whole game and stuff, it's got Pokemon cries you can hear in the background of the music. Yeah. 
if you're paying attention, you will hear the music and the tunes, but then you might also hear a Pokemon cry of a Pokemon in that area. I never noticed until it was pointed out, and I was actually listening for it. And even when I was listening for it, it's not super stark to where, you know, it clearly is a big cry. But no, it's it's in there and it's nice. And they didn't have to do that, but they did. They added that in, I guess, to add to the ambiance and the experience and to really sell that you're out in the wild. You're out in the wilderness collecting these mons and you can hear them in the background. Isn't that wonderful? I also love the, like, ninja kid that they added in. Um, that, like, another detail just being that sometimes they just hide because they're ninjas. They're kids, like, playing ninja, I guess. And they're hiding in the environment, waiting to trap you to battle. And isn't that awesome, too? I mean, they didn't have to do some kid ninja who likes to put up, like, traps or disguises in order to then surprise with a battle. Like, that's crazy. That's wild. I love that. I love that unique idea and whatnot. Because, once again, not something that's required. It was just another touch to add into the world and the environment and the experience. Wonderful stuff. Along with Fortress City and stuff, there's the Kecleon encounter. Like, just full-on static Pokemon standing there, invisible in case of, you know, Kecleon. But just kind of there, and you have to just kind of use a device, the scope, to see them. And then you battle them, and that's how they are. And it makes sense because Kecleon is, of course, the color change Pokemon and whatnot. And it is a chameleon, and like I said, fun detail. It could have just been a Pokemon that was found at, in the root as well as the others, but they didn't. They chose another unique way to encounter this thing, and not only, you know, once with Steven on the bridge, but there's multiple locations. You have to use the Devon Scope to get a Kecleon away from the gym. That's part of the challenge of the gym, let's say, even. You have to explore a little further, get that item, and then come back. Um, and I think that's lovely. I do. I mean, I know you can encounter Kecleon, but I just love also having these random invisible wall things and having to figure out how to get around them. That's fantastic. Also, the bike system, how you could have two different bikes and stuff. The acro bike, there's so many details packed into this bike. I always choose the acro bike. I still always do because of these little details. Because you can do a little wheelie, of course. That's the first thing you can discover, let's say. But then you might discover that you can like make turns by jumping and hopping. And you can, of course, bunny hop while doing a wheelie and stuff. But, you know, there's other stuff too. You can also do it to the side. And not only is this stuff cool, like, it, it's sick. It's bike tricks. I mean, come on. What's more cooler than that? But no, it's not just cool. It's functional because they put in the overworld ways to interact. Places you can only go with the acro bike. Same with the mock bike. They have their slides and stuff, and you can only use that to get to certain areas and that's wonderful i think that's great for exploration and the fact that you might need to just swap around bikes a few times in order to get that full exploration of hoenn super great i love it i also always love seeing the reporters in the games so you will sometimes come across little news reporters and they will usually stop you and get an interview some words and you can actually input some little phrase or whatever words you want to put in that you're limited to that works but then you can even see it on the television later on and that's also just something I always got a kick out of when I was younger and stuff. And even now, I really enjoy it. I also really enjoy seeing overworld Pokemon, especially this random house with so many Wingle inside. I don't know why, but I love that it's been included. It's just a house of Wingle, and uh, it's really fun to talk to them. 
and just see them doing their little dee 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 like wingle thing in there. Secret bases are another huge thing that like is so incredible in the game. We've had secret bases in BDSP and that was that was awful. I mean the statue system and whatnot. The, these are secret bases. Even in Oros, I did not enjoy them as much as I enjoyed secret bases in the original Ruby Sapphire games. Oh my goodness. Collecting things, getting dolls, putting up decorations, everything. It's incredible. I love it. <laughs> I do. And you can customize. Such a great idea. And such a cute implementation, as I said. They didn't need to do it, but they did. The abandoned ship is also so cool to explore. I love seeing that detail, and I think I am, you know, in the majority of people who also love the detail of passing it on the ship to another location and being like, what is that? And not having surf and not being able to see it yet. And then later in the game, coming across it again after you've made so much progress and getting to explore it. It's just lovely. It's so wonderful. And the games are full of that stuff. You're constantly kind of going back and forth, but it, it always feels like fun exploration and fun stuff rather than like just chaos. And so I appreciate it so much. I did also want to mention contests as a whole. Like, I really like them, and I like all the mechanics and stuff, and I did a big video on it. Maybe not big, but I did a video on it that took a little bit of time, and I enjoyed it. Hope you might as well. So if you want more in-depth contest knowledge or perspective, check out the video. But no, contests are great. More specifically, if you'd like a specific detail, I find really charming and unique. It's those chalk portraits. I say chalk, but I don't quite know. Like the sketchy portraits that you see of the winners hanging on the wall. I get a kick from those. I think it's really cool. It's something that you only see for that, the wall art, and that's fantastic. There's also, you know, art, an art gallery in <laughs> the Hoenn region, and it's just all around amazing, I would say. I love those inclusions. These were just a list of little details I noticed that I really got a kick out of or wanted to share. And so I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I had a lot of fun. If you did, please be sure to like the video. I'd appreciate it so much. It helps a lot. Same with subscribing. And if you want to see more, obviously, that would be a good idea. I'd also love to hear from you down below. So definitely go wild. Um, but yeah, if you've come this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. And bye-bye!